it looks like Disney may be at fault. And I think Disney strong-armed Sony for more money. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, isn't it? More money. It's all about the money. And personally, after reading these updates online earlier today and late last night before going to bed, I don't think I can feel any sympathy for both of them. And yes, opinions can change, but I really got to share my thoughts on this and hopefully I get to hear more from you guys. So I have some more information, um, some more updates regarding the Sony Disney deal, and it looks like it's not going to be happening. It doesn't seem like they could have reached a certain agreement. And I have an article to read to you guys from a Hawaii Tran Bui. Sorry if I mispronounced that. She posted this on SlashFilm.com talking about the whole situation with Sony and how Sony's calling it disappointing. And that piqued my interest, of course, and my curiosity. And I wanted to share this with you. After reports surfaced that Disney and Sony's Spider-Man deal, which would keep Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige as lead creative producer for Sony's Spider-Man film starring Tom Holland, was collapsing, Sony has issued a statement laying the blame on the House of Mouse. Sony Pictures is committing to continuing the Spider-Man franchise without Marvel Studios' involvement, but that is the fault of Disney for cutting short a lucrative deal, according to the studio's response. In a statement made to The Hollywood Reporter, Sony says it is disappointed that... Marvel Studios' President Kevin Feige would no longer be acting as lead creative producer on its Spider-Man film franchise, firmly laying the blame on Disney. The statement released by a Sony spokesperson says, Much of today's news about Spider-Man has mischaracterized recent discussions about Kevin Feige's involvement in the franchise. We are disappointed, but respect Disney's decision not to have him continue as lead producer of our next live-action Spider-Man film. We hope this might change in the future, but understand that the many new responsibilities that Disney has given him, including all their newly added Marvel properties, do not allow time for him to work on an IP they do not own. Kevin is terrific, and we are grateful for his help and guidance and appreciate the path he has helped put us on, which we will continue. The studio released the same statement in a thread from its Twitter account, which suggested that Sony is rapidly attempting crisis management as the studio loses the battle of public goodwill. The Sony statement suggests that yesterday's report was an intentional leak on Disney's part to sway public opinion in their favor. In doing so, Disney would turn private boardroom negotiations into a very public battleground, though Sony seems to be standing its ground. According to the report that broke yesterday, Disney had approached Sony with a new co-financing deal that would have resulted in a 50-50 partnership between the studios over the films. Sony declined the deal in favor of keeping with the current arrangement in which Marvel Studios gets somewhere around 5% of the first dollar gross. The two sides had reportedly been discussing how to extend the deal for future Spider-Man movies to star Tom Holland before talks collapsed. So let's break this down, basically. Disney kind of like went back in their deal. Initially, they agreed upon only receiving 5% of the total gross income, the first 5% of the total gross income of the box office release. And now they're going back into the deal and they want to come back and renegotiate. I mean, do you guys remember when there were talks about how like Sony stated that if Spider-Man Far From Home doesn't make a billion dollars, the rights would revert back to them and they will no longer be collaborating with Disney to make Spider-Man films? That was a lie. But we knew that something was going to happen. And Tom Holland's already reached his five deal, his five movie deal. That being Far From Home, the fifth Spider-Man film. Or I guess the fifth appearance of Spider-Man, if, if you will. So it all comes down to money. And I think Disney got a little greedy. You know, at, at first I thought, well, they're not really being greedy at all. I mean, they're the creative force behind these Spider-Man films that came out from Marvel Studios and Sony. Uh, while Sony is just sitting back, twiddling their thumbs, and letting Disney and Marvel Studios do all the work, all the creative work. And it's because of that success and that creative work, those films are financially successful. And they're huge. And this is Sony's ultimate IP. And it's their biggest film to date right now. It's made over a billion dollars. It's made more money than any other previous Spider-Man film. And it's the first Spider-Man film in history to reach the billion dollar mark. So it all comes down to money. And honestly, I think it's more of like a dick measuring contest. And sorry if I'm being a little bit inappropriate, but that's what it turns out to be. Sony's being very, very stubborn. And surprisingly, they're holding the ground so well against a company like Disney of that caliber. Sony is like microscopic compared to Disney. Disney is the biggest company in the entire world. And Sony's just nothing to Disney. 
And what it appears is that Disney is like the bully in this situation. It gives that perception that Disney's just basically strong arming Sony in like, you know, hey, you know what? We want more of a cut because we feel like we're not getting enough. As if Disney can't get any more money. Disney has like almost all the money in the entire world. They're practically monopolizing out there by buying other companies and studios. They own so much property that you can't even like fathom. It, it's ridiculous. So what are your thoughts? Is Disney being greedy? Is Disney asking for too much? Do you think Disney should get at least 50-50? Do you think Disney should at least get 50% of the shares of the earnings from the box office because they're the ones that are being the creative force? And do you applaud Sony and commend them for holding their ground? And do you think that Spider-Man should be reverted back to Sony and only sticking around for only Sony Spider-Verse films? Or should Spider-Man continue in appearing in Marvel Studios films? You let me know down in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your case, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click on bell notifications so y'all don't miss anything. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.